Hello, and welcome to Dyslexia Devoted, the podcast dedicated to building awareness, understanding, and strategies to help those with dyslexia. I'm your host, Lisa Parnello, dyslexia therapist and founder of Parnello Education Services. This show features information, stories, candid interviews, and experiences with dyslexia at all ages. Join me as we dive into today's episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Hello, friends, and welcome back. School is just starting to get into the swing of things, and kids are starting to come home with more homework each day. Many families find it to be a battle to get that homework done, especially for students who struggle with dyslexia. Welcome to episode 15 of Dyslexia Devoted, where we will be giving you some tips and strategies to make homework time a little less stressful. Thanks for tuning into this episode. If you haven't done so already, be sure to share this podcast with a friend who you think would love to learn a little bit more about dyslexia. Time to get started with today's episode. We're going to break it down into five tips to make homework time less stressful for a student with dyslexia. Tip number one, set up a proper learning space. The first thing to do is to minimize any distractions that you can. The most obvious ones are technology, such as turning off the TV, making sure iPads and phones are further away than the kids can reach, and so they're not as easily distracted, or even where they can even hear the buzz of a message coming in from their friends making sure that you can take away that temptation of chatting with somebody online can make things a little bit easier to focus on schoolwork. Next is siblings. Sometimes the biggest distractor for a student getting their homework done is their brother or sister hanging around, giggling, or asking their own questions about their homework. So if there's any way to get the kids to stagger their homework time or to have one kid do their homework in the living room while the other one does it in the kitchen, If there's any way to make it so the kids aren't distracted by each other, that would be another ideal situation to make homework time a little bit easier. Next is having a good, flat, hard work surface. Sometimes kids will try to work in their lap and then they end up with messy, scribbly writing because they can't really write on that uneven surface of their lap. So trying to find a coffee table or a desk or a kitchen table or a countertop somewhere where it's a nice, hard, flat surface and not a cozy bed that they might lay in and decide to fall over and take a nap instead of doing their homework. And we wanna make sure it's a designated space that this is where they do their homework at. One thing to consider is that the seating might need to adjust over time. For example, there's one family I work with that has three kids and each child sits in a very different seat when we work together. I have flexible seating in my office or some kids are at their homes. And when we work together, different kids actually pick different chairs. And sometimes the choice in chairs and having one have a little office chair and one has a sturdy stool and one has a comfy couch because they're doing more reading out loud rather than working at something that's written down. So giving them different choices for seating and knowing that that choice may not be the permanent choice for them. If a kid is five, they might want to sit in a very different chair than when they're 10. So making sure that the seating arrangement grows with the students to continuously be their best choice for them and the kind of work that they're doing. If the student's task is to read 30 pages out of a book, maybe a comfy couch is the best place to work. But if their assignment is to handwrite an essay on a piece of paper, then you definitely need a solid table for that. One other distraction to think about is fidgets. Some students actually do really well with a fidget and something they can squish in their hand and it keeps them occupied mentally if they have their engines running in all cylinders. But a lot of times fidgets are just an excuse to play with a toy. Often the kids who argue the most for a fidget are the ones who don't need them. My rule for fidgets during work time is I better not even notice that you have them because you are so focused on your work I don't even notice you have it. And that's a general rule of thumb. Most of the time the kids who need it and are fidgeting are doing so in a way that you don't even notice whereas a kid who uses a fidget in such an obvious way is usually a kid who doesn't actually need it at all. All right, tip number two. Set aside an expected homework time each day. Predictability is key. Making a routine out of something cuts down on those battles and the avoidance of homework because they know this is just how it's done every day. Make a schedule if your days aren't always the same. I know some families have all sorts of different sports activities that they go to, or art classes and things like that. And so maybe your homework schedule isn't the same every single day, but have a predictable pattern. For example, if it is soccer practice day, you're gonna do homework at five o'clock, but if it's not soccer practice day, then you're gonna do your homework at four o'clock. Figure out a schedule that works for you and your family and stick to it. So the kids always know when the time is to do their homework each and every day. 
And when you're thinking about that schedule and when to make homework time, I highly suggest that there be a little bit of a break between the end of the school day and when that homework actually starts. Kids often need a good 20 to 30 minutes to eat a snack, play around, and just take a load off and relax for a little bit before they're ready to meaningfully engage in more academic rigor. Because oftentimes kids with dyslexia already struggle all day long during school. They need a few minutes of downtime in between before you're asking them to turn their learning brains back on again. Time for tip number three. Break down assignments. The first thing to do is check for due dates. Figure out when each assignment is due and how long each one of those assignments is going to take. So that way a student isn't rushing to try to get it all done at the end. Sometimes they're eager to start a really big project that's due Friday, but maybe there's a really important one that's due tomorrow that's actually going to take a pretty long time. Make a plan for when each assignment is due and when it'll get done. I know it depends on the school that the kids go to. Sometimes they get their homework all in a week in advance. Sometimes you don't know till the day of. So do what works best for you and your family and the type of assignment scheduling you guys get for your school. If a student has a really big assignment, make sure to break it into stages. And sometimes those stages might be over the course of a couple days, or maybe it might just be within the course of your homework session for that one day if it's due tomorrow. It's important to build in breaks when you're talking about homework assignments. Sometimes those breaks need to happen in the middle of one really long assignment that's due tomorrow and they have to do a lot of different parts to it, set little mini goals and take a small break in between. Whether that break is just to go get a healthy little snack in between or do a five minute Lego break if that's something that the student is able to walk away from after five minutes with a timer. Something that's not too tempting to never come back from that break, but enough to get a nice little reset so it doesn't become so overwhelming and cause a shutdown later on by trying to push through on this really difficult task. Another great strategy is to take that break or get that snack in between subjects. So if there's a math assignment and a reading assignment, build in a little break right in between those two tasks to make it a little bit easier to get all that work done without feeling like it's just never ending. Tip number four is all about accommodations. Check to see which accommodations suit that task best. Would it be better if they listened to the audiobook instead of reading the chapter book that they brought home? Do they need some extra breaks because tonight's homework is extra difficult and you want to make sure they get it done and don't just quit and shut down halfway through? Is it something that requires a lot of writing so perhaps speech to text might be a really good option where they can speak what they want to say and have the computer write it down for them? So pick an accommodation that works for the kind of assignment that's being asked of them for that day. Another accommodation is to talk to the teachers about shortened assignments especially if it always takes a student significantly longer to get things done than it does their peers. Perhaps they can show what they know by writing fewer words or answering questions in incomplete sentences, especially if they have to physically write on a worksheet, which often takes a lot more work. Another option is to find out if you can get approval so that the student doesn't get points deducted for spelling mistakes. For example, if it's a science class and not necessarily English or language arts where they really are learning about proper spelling and grammar, Maybe they can get approval to do their history or their science assignments where they can just write and give out their ideas without focusing so much on the spelling as long as it's legible and makes basic sense. And sometimes that can make homework go significantly faster if the student isn't having to stress so much about spelling each and every word properly without getting points taken off for their assignment. Now it's time for tip number five. End with a reward. Make sure all of that hard work is rewarded in some way. And that reward can look very different. Sometimes it's a healthy snack. Sometimes it's dessert if they had dinner before their homework time and now they get their dessert now that they're finished with homework time. Perhaps it's the chance to go play outside. Maybe it's their daily screen time allotment or they get to watch their favorite cartoon. And also try to give the possibility to earn extra of whatever that positive reward is by having a good attitude and persevering through a challenging task on their homework for the night and making sure that they see that there is a reward for all of that hard work and praising them for the hard work, not necessarily for it being perfect or having the exact right answer, but for pursuing the kinds of behaviors we want to see again, which is having that great attitude and not giving up when things get hard because it does get hard and it might stay hard for a while and we want them to know that there is a reward for all of that hard work. All right, time to recap our episode for today. Tip number one, set up a proper learning space, somewhere they can focus with the least amount of distractions possible, and a comfy seat that might have to change over time as the student grows a little older. 
Tip number two, schedule an expected homework time each day. And that may not be at the exact same time every day because of different sports and arts and music classes and things like that, but make sure it's predictable for each day of the week. Tip number three, break down the assignments. Set the priorities, which ones should get done first, which ones get done second, and include breaks within that work time to make sure that they don't burn out in the middle of a busy homework session so that they have a chance for a little reset in between challenging tasks. Tip number four, use accommodations. Pick an accommodation that matches the kind of task at hand to try to make work not take as long for a student who has dyslexia because that's the reason approved accommodations exist, to level the playing field so that homework doesn't always have to take significantly longer than their classmates. And last but definitely not least, end with some form of reward, something pleasant to finish off a challenging homework session. All right, if you haven't done so already, be sure to share the Dyslexia Devoted podcast with somebody that you know that you think would love to learn a little bit more about dyslexia. See you next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Join us for our next episode by subscribing to this podcast as we devote each episode to different aspects of dyslexia. See you next time.